Let's now put together a whole curve sketching menu. I mean, we looked at things individually, we looked at how to do it with the first derivative, how to do it with the second derivative. But if we use all the tools together, we have a very efficient curve sketching menu. So things to look for. Remember back, uh, well, back in term one, when we just started looking at some simple curve sketching, but points of discontinuity, bottom of the fraction can't equal zero, it means you can have a vertical asymptote, things like that. Uh, when we did uh, polynomial division, it broke it up, we could find horizontal or oblique asymptotes. So there's our, so x plus one on x, we know the one on x part um, can't equal zero, because you've got a constant on the top of fraction. We've got an oblique asymptote at y equals x. So when we're looking at a particular curve, some function of x, okay, we can locate our stationary points. There's some key points we want to look at. We know that's when the first derivative is equal to zero. Once we locate those stationary points, we can then go and classify them using the second derivative. And if it's concave down, we know we've got a maximum turning point. Concave up, we've got a minimum turning point. Points of inflection, I would only go and find points of inflection if they asked me to. I mean, if it's a continuous curve and you've got a maximum point and a minimum point, well, logic says there must be a point of inflection in between the two. But unless they actually want to know its, its value, I, I wouldn't bother going to all that effort of finding it. Um, so, but if they do, then of course, again, we have to locate possibilities. So that's now second derivative is equal to zero. And then we need to work out whether it is. Now, whether that is, testing either side of the point, or, as we saw yesterday, we could use that third derivative idea, but wh whichever way, we need to show there is a change in concavity, because that's what an inflection point is. Now, other things that can help, if you notice the derivative is positive, you know the curve's going up, or it's increasing, and if you notice it's negative, then we know the curve's going down. So if you differentiate something, and, and it might turn into a perfect square, for instance. And so then you know, oh, well, this curve's always going up because it's always positive. And now we've seen about concavity as well. So for the second derivative greater than zero, we know the curve's going to be shaped concave up. Otherwise, concave down if it's less than zero. So now we can put this together with ideas we looked at at the, the start of the year. Remember we, we drew some really basic graphs where we said, oh, the x-intercepts will behave like the roots. And the, the question was, oh, well, how do you know whether it turns before the y-axis or turns after the y-axis? Well, now we can use calculus to find out exactly where those turning points are. So combining all our different ideas, we can now draw something like this. I don't have to worry about factorising it now, though because I can get a reasonable sketch without factorising this one. If it does factorise nicely, terrific, because then I'll be able to locate x-intercepts as well. So that's the other thing with these graphs. If the x-intercepts are easy to find, then, then find them and, and plot them, because they're useful. Uh, but something like this is not necessarily easy to factorise, so I might not bother with this one. Y-intercepts, of course, are always easy to find. You just substitute in x equals zero. OK, we're going to need our first derivative. Second derivative, and for the sake of completeness, I will look at the third derivative as well. And even though it hasn't asked for inflection points, for the sake of the example, I'll, I'll put that in here. Okay, so let's find our stationary points. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, solve the derivative is equal to zero. Solving that particular quadratic, we get nicely factorised. We have two possibilities. One and three is our stationary points. Let's go classify them. So x equals one. Second derivative is negative, so I know we've got a maximum turning point. The y value turns out to be negative 1. Okay, let's classify the other one. Uh, we've got a positive second derivative. So this one is a minimum turning point, and its y value turns out to be negative 5. Let's uh, find a possible point of inflection. Again, as I say, this is a continuous curve, so logically one must exist between those two turning points. But let's solve it. Second derivative equal to zero, we get x equals two. And when x equals two, the third derivative is six. Well, it's always six, it was a constant. But that's not equal to zero. So yes, two negative three is a point of inflection. All right, let's put all that information together. One minus one, and there's my minimum, three minus five. Inflection point, 
tempting just to draw a straight line at the moment because everything lines up reasonably nicely. Uh, but remember, we are drawing a curve. Y-intercept was negative 5, as say the X-intercept. Well, one thing I can tell now about X-intercepts, how many have I got? Yeah. Must only be one, because if this is a maximum turning point, and there's no other turning points over here, so it can't go back up. On the right-hand side, it'll go minimum turning point and go up. So there will be some solution uh, which is greater than the 3. Let's draw it in. Notice, though, I stopped my graph short of the x-axis. Because I haven't bothered finding the x-intercept, I thought, well, I can't get it wrong then, can I? It keeps going that way. It'll cut it at some point. Trust me. <laughs> 